it's a pretty huge, like, revealing thing that happened during the latest Ever Crisis chapter popped up in FF7 EC, and that is getting updated, like, periodically and it's clear that they are spreading the updates of that story because that story is starting to add context to ff7 uh rebirth story much less you know where the heck they could be going with this shit let me pull up the the big thing about it ever crisis has been getting periodic updates in regards to the the sephiroth origin story and for anybody that doesn't know what the heck ever crisis is it's essentially the the gotcha mobile slash pc game that is a fairly decent recreation of OG FF7 and new stuff. My problem with it was that it required so much grinding that I sort of just stopped. But there has been some pretty substantial story stuff that's been popping up over the last couple of days. Yeah, like the the one that is pretty impactful is is this this jumping bridge here from story to story with Sephiroth. And I'm definitely thinking Ever Crisis story stuff, which a lot of people are saying is pretty dang good, is definitely setting a foundation for where the heck they are going from this point forward. So I'm just gonna start scrolling through this a little bit. This is a, a recording of like raw Ever Crisis footage. So let's just check this out. I have a fairly decent understanding, but the whole point is that it's this the Sephiroth origin story. New mix. Yeah, he's still younger here, right? This is not... He's definitely still younger here. So this is definitely Glenn. This has to be Glenn, right? This is the Crisis Core Wutai portion, yeah. This isn't fake Glenn. Actually Glenn. There is a dog. Wait, is this from the island they went to? The very early story understanding that I had is that, you know, Sephiroth and Glenn and everybody meet up on that one island. Lucy and Matt are good. We don't have much time, so listen. There's an air raid plan to take out the soldiers that defected. Oh, good. Guessing you weren't informed but Heidegger received the order direct from the president himself. So this is, yeah, we're at the period of the story where Glenn has defected from, uh, from Soldier, where he is not a part of them anymore. So I'm guessing it's the same thing with Lucia and Matt, because we eventually learned that, you know, in the side story of Cosmo Canyon, they all, you know, eventually form avalanche and stuff like that. How do you know this? I have friends in high places. Base is gonna take a beating, but the south side of Fort Tamlin should be relatively safe. Spread the word. Why me? Because I can't. Counting on you, all right. And they're currently in Tamlin. Sorry about your necklace. What? Huh? Yeah, the the, the music sounding Crisis Core ish is definitely intentional. So from the previous chapter, yeah. He loses his mom's necklace during the first soldier story when he was young. I see. Fake uh, Sephiroth backstory, right? Nuke these guys. Damn, the PC version of this game looks really good. Yes. 
Oh, the necklace had a picture of Lucrezia in it. That makes sense. Hate breeds hate. It's a cycle that... Whoa. Whoa. You don't have anything to prove. We know how strong you're. Maybe you can show some compassion and know you've got it in you. This is when they were younger. All it takes is a little compassion. Wow, they're humanizing Sephiroth? This is weird. Feels like it. This feels like so long ago. Surprised he even remembered the necklace. They're humanizing Sephiroth. He was pretty normal, you know? Until certain shit happens. Yeah, this is way before Nibelheim Sephiroth, yeah. This is even before Crisis Core Sephiroth. Right? Or way before it. There's going to be an attack on the base. Everyone needs to evacuate to the south. Okay. Sorry, sir, but our commanding officer has the authority to issue an evacuation. Huh. Was Glenn alive during Crisis Core? I do not believe so. We'll talk to the captain. been a landslide down south, the path is completely something or other. Let's get to the meat. Let's get to the meat. It's the hero. Damn, those, those turkeys are getting it. Those turkeys are certainly getting it. Turkey has Genji armor on. Yeah, this plays out very much like the old PS1 game. You really did it! Sephiroth the hero. I find it funny that this is like a mobile game technically and it looks better than a PS3 game at times. You can save everyone, huh? Yeah, this is a very similar behemoth you fight in Remake. This weird, like, proto-behemoth thing. <laughs> what the heck was that? Alright. You can become a real hero. And blind me in the process. Whoa! Whoa, big expensive cutscene? Yes, it is.
体何がしたいんだ僕は僕がしたいことは hmm. Already Genova headaches? 本当に誰もいないなら殺してくれ星の中でみんなと会いたい Wait a minute, who is this character? Who's Rosen? This is the kid on the island? Oh, the last Redoran. And they have to like clear out the island. Huh. Oh, so Sephiroth has to make the choice of killing this kid or everybody. I see. But why? Because Sephiroth works for Shinra. <laughs> Damn, he really does go through with it. Oh, shit. Bro. Wait, what? Wait, what? Kono tochi ni shoutai fumei no bukimi na chikara ga ari. Sono shoutai ni tsukitomeru made wa chousa ga owatta to wa iyenai. Oh, that's totally young Angeal. Is this like a preview of the next season? Tatoe aite ga dare de are. Sore ga omae wo douyou saseru nara. <laughs> Bro, wow, okay. Dude, just this. Dude, uh, no, what, fucking what? Just this alone is like so wait 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 so first and foremost what does this what does this set up for, for, from a proposal of a story perspective that sephiroth is a different version of sephiroth right this is not omni sephiroth as we think we know it this version of sephiroth doesn't even show up in ff7 rebirth maybe not this version of sephiroth might never even say a line of dialogue in game two but he only shows up at the end of game one or does he yeah we don't actually know it was my impression that this this Sephiroth at the edge of creation is the one that is talking to Cloud through the live stream, right? When he's like going and learning about how different worlds work and all shit. I don't think that is the case now because this one has always talked differently, right? Like this is the Sephiroth at the end of Remake Part 1 that quite literally tells Cloud, like, dude, we should team up. Like he, and we don't understand his intentions, but Cloud is like hell bent on like, no, you're an asshole. You know, I don't like you. Sephiroth is trying to convince him like, hey, you know, there's seven seconds to the end. What are you going to do with it? We should team up type shit. He doesn't talk like any of the other Sephiroths through or throughout Remake, the original, and throughout Rebirth. He never talks like that. So it's almost like this Sephiroth is the one that's hyper aware of his existence and what happens. To have like these moments of what eventually breaks Sephiroth, Right? What eventually like sort of sends him down his dark spiral. And he is now in the edge of creation reflecting on this shit. Okay, so here's where I think they're going with this. Sephiroth is inherently not super evil. It's just that the process of which he goes through in the main story 
does set him down like the dark path, right? Of just kill everything. However, omnipotent Sephiroth here seems to be like aware of a lot of his shit, right? Seems to be aware of quite literally what has happened, where he goes, how he exists, and where he's at now, like at the end of Advent Children and shit. So what I think it is, and this is what it, this is what it feels like it's setting up for me. I don't think this is setting up a Cloud Sephiroth team up, where Sephiroth wants to literally like team up with these dudes and shit. To me, it more feels like he's feels like he's making the right decision. It feels like I am going to save us from something, from something that is like way bigger than what we are type of shit. So I'm thinking that it, it definitely comes across as like, oh no, Cloud, the only way we can, we can survive this, the only way you and I survive this or we save everybody is if we do this one thing. But that one thing is going to be some Thanos shit. And we don't know what it is. That's the seven seconds to the end shit that he's talking about. Sephiroth's, in his brain, in his mind, his result is some Thanos shit where it's like, I'm trying to save everybody, but I have to kill everybody alongside it. I think that's exactly the point of this scene is that Sephiroth makes a choice that I need to I need to effectively do this necessary evil in order to do what I think is right. I think that's what we got here. I think we don't know anything about this fool. And that's the craziest part is that this Sephiroth at the edge of creation, whatever the fuck we're seeing, whatever that is like the birth of a new universe, some weird shit, this version of Sephiroth is willing to do like the necessary evil to actually save people. But clearly everybody else is like, no, 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 no. Don't do that. That's your takeaway from it? It seems that way because he's friendly to Cloud. This isn't the same Sephiroth. Every other Sephiroth we get through the story is fucking with Cloud. The, cano the canonical Sephiroth is like fucking with Cloud every single time and he's like manipulating him and doing what he does from the old game. This one though is weirdly hyper aware of shit and he is about to, yeah, he, his entire thing potentially is the end justifies the means. The craziest part, here's where I'm upset. There should have been more of this in Rebirth, bro. There really should have been. We needed to get more of this shit in Rebirth. In Rebirth, we're, we're left like hanging. We're really left hanging where it's like, I feel like we know something but then we know absolutely nothing. If Even if this little bit of knowledge was there that massively changes this right that already like sets up the next part of the story to be like yo what because we have no idea that's it's so vague right it's so fucking like seven seconds to the end and all of this that we don't, we don't know what you're talking about dude this one is more interesting now because this guy is literally connected to his past his past is having an influence on his existence in the future he's like looking back on his life here before something big happens i think he is stuck like in a in a, a fucking nexus event or some shit i think there's something here that is going to like destroy all the timelines all this wild shit this is where my brain is going and it's seven seconds until it all goes down but sephiroth is like stuck in time he's on the edge of creation right before it all happens he's found a way to stop it all he for some reason he needs cloud to execute it i don't know what the hell is going on but yeah the edge of creation behind cloud is the red one right there's there's the white one behind sephiroth which looks very one winged angel like and then there's also the the red one that is behind cloud why seven seconds i don't know we don't have this goddamn information dude the scene where sephiroth murdering the last Rodoran and what happens after let me check that out some more context You were with Glenn. Yeah, this kid is like the last inhabitant of this island that Shinra once wiped out. There's no one alive to see your smoke signals. Yeah, Glenn is from this game. Yeah, they, this island is like mega fuck. From what I understand, like that was the whole reason that they go here. They're starting the construction of a reactor, which causes the island to begin to implode. So they want to evacuate Rosen. After confessing, they murdered all the Radorans. Shinra killed all the inhabitants? And he's the last one? Glenn, Matt, and Lucia killed them. Ooh. 
And Sephiroth. Oh, man. Okay. Just a, l just a little shade of genocide. It's going to take out all these people for corporate greed. Are we the bad guys? Yeah, the island's like falling apart. Whoa, Zephyroth's about to kill the kid. Oh, sh shit. Jesus, that thing went to hell. Whoa, bro. Do you fight Sephiroth? Product of the island's raging Mako, or it is the will of the planet? Who cares as long as it stays the hell out of our. What the shit? Weird. So, wait a minute. We're talking about like planetary defense stuff that is not weapons? Dude, it's got a bunch of faces in its mouth. Maybe Genova related. God damn. Yeah, the spirits of the dead manifested. Oh, I get it. You get it from Glenn's perspective first, and then they give it to you from Sephiroth's perspective later. Just throws his ass down. The main island and surrounding isles will still be underwater. The bedrock was weak and the explosions led to the unanticipated instability. Redora has been deemed unsuitable for Mako extraction. Head office has already been informed, so it's useless anyway. They just killed everybody, and now they don't even get it. This is what causes his shift to... W oh. This is what makes Glenn defect. This is what makes Glenn, Matt, and Lucia defect. That does set up for a pretty goddamn intriguing origin story for Sephiroth, you know? They're doing a pretty good job at making these characters, like, not, you know, complete shit. Again, there, there's some parts of this that got me a little worried just because of the new compilation of FF7 stuff in the mid-2000s, and this is like, okay, completely new stuff. The new stuff in Rebirth and Remake was pretty good, right? All things considered, was pretty good. But hearing that the story... Like, the actual new story elements for this game are, are actually very good. That young Sephiroth is, is effectively now expanding what the hell is going on with this Sephiroth is pretty interesting. This is all related to that scene. 
居場所は作ればいい俺もそうした協力するもう頑張れないローゼン頼むあの人たちを助けると思ってあの人たちは優しくてきっとそのせいで死ぬ出るとみんな死ぬぞ助けたいのは僕じゃないだろ Yeah, the stuff with young Sephiroth is pretty damn good. 決めろ生き延びて欲しいのは誰だ So Sephiroth effectively has to choose between saving Glenn, Matt, Lucia or killing this kid. So... Okay, I think the narrative comparisons are pretty big. So again, Sephiroth makes a choice in his younger self to for the greater good type stuff. He, he is effectively uh, very much a Thanos situation, but he's a greater good. He doesn't want to like 50-50 the whole universe, but he's coming to the conclusion that the way to be a hero, the way to save everybody is to sacrifice others. His mentality is that not everybody can be saved. I tried to save everybody and it doesn't work, you know? I think that is... Very relevant to, to show that moment to this moment. Sephiroth doesn't want Cloud to die. This version of Sephiroth doesn't want Cloud to die. He doesn't. He's trying to actively save him, but he's saving him for a reason that sucks. He's eventually saving him for a reason that is like, if I save you, then all these other people are going to die or something like that. Like, the, it'll be the end of your world as you know it. He's trying to be the savior, but he's trying to be the savior in a totally fucked up way. Yeah, all right. Audrey's translation for the trailer of season two. I got to check this out. L let me, let's watch the end part again. This is super fucking interesting. Dude, this needed to be in Rebirth, man! Come on! This is all super fascinating. I'm actually kind of pissed. This stuff should not have been relegated to this game. I think it's neat. I think it is genuinely cool. But these things are like the connective tissue that we're sort of missing at the end of Rebirth to lead us into the next game instead of just like, what? Like, wait a minute, what? Into the next game. The closest thing we get in Rebirth is the moment where Cloud and Sephiroth are like going in between worlds and shit. And Sephiroth just breaks shit down. First Soldier Season 2 trailer is insane. Is that Young and Jeel? Here's my English subs for the trailer. この地に気象隊不明の武器見な力がある。その正体を突き止めるまでは調査が終わったとは言えない。たとえ相手が誰であれ、それがお前をどう用させるなら。助け。ちょっと気をつけろ。いや。ホジョハンセフラス。It because, dude, Sephiroth does the fucking cloud pose here, dog. Effectively, wow. Okay. So what they are doing is that Sephiroth is effectively haunted by Hojo in Genova form, the same way that Cloud is haunted by Sephiroth from his Genova form. They are both fucking going through the same shit. I get you. It, but, but who's effectively behind all of this shit going south? It, this is definitely Genova shit, bro. Definitely is Genova stuff. I think they're amping up the Genova elements a ton more. Yeah, because now Sephiroth's also getting the Genova headaches and shit. And he also got the Genova headaches in the previous cutscene. I think they're trying to expand Genova as a character. Check this out. Sephiroth already going through it. 
again, the Sephiroth doesn't get those Genova headaches until I think story-wise, like thematically in the story, do we see Sephiroth getting Genova headaches until he literally goes to Nibelheim and finds Genova. Literally goes to Nibelheim and has his like breakdown and shit. Then he starts getting them until the trauma kicks in. Yeah, this is at least really fucking fascinating. I'll tell you what. Right? This is at least setting up a lot of really interest. This would make a great DLC, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Ah!